Okay, going live soon, huh? Three, two, one. Hopefully it works. First time in Google Chrome. Okay, just get ready, get ready. Okay. Oh, okay, I can see Kelvin in Facebook page. All right. Okay, hello parents. Uh, thanks so much for being here. And this is Coach John again from Learning Out of the Box. And thanks so much for being here, especially uh, probably you have a quick dinner and you're joining us right now. All right, so today we have another session of uh, our guest invite because we want to share with parents uh, and support parents who teach their kids, especially. Hello, Kelvin. Hello, John. Hi, Kelvin. Okay, uh, before I let Kelvin talk, uh, because this guy can really talk. Yeah, <laughs> so later, I will just leave you and Kelvin for the next one hour and then I'll come back at 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Okay. perfect, perfect. Yeah, see, this is the speaking genes uh, is in this guy. Okay, so, uh, so I'm given a clue. Uh, so what about speaking? Yeah, so... Um, Kel Kelvin actually uh, run many centers called Speech Academy Asia. And this is a center that empowers kids to speak confidently on stage. Yeah, and I think that uh, before I, before we came um, on to this interview, in fact, when I Google 21st century skill, this is actually one of the essential skills that our children must have to be able to thrive in the new world. Yeah, so um, this interview is going to be free and the reason why we do this is because we want to empower parents who teach our kids. And parents, if you like the video or the sharing, I would love that you help us to, to pass on the video to more parents so that more can benefit from it. So you can like and share and even comments by asking any question that's relevant because Kelvin is going to share something that is going to cover oral as well as uh, DSA interviews, which may be of interest to you. Yeah. Okay. Before I uh, we start, Kelvin, would you be able to share with us some backstory on how you started off Speech Academy Asia? I think thanks, John. Thanks for inviting me online. Uh, am I loud enough? Is it clear for you? Very loud. Your voice is naturally loud, <laughs> la. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I should open another school called uh, Listen Academy Asia <laughs> because people say I speak too much. Uh, it's time for me to listen. <laughs> okay, la, but, but uh, in order for us to speak, I think we have to listen first because by listening and by understanding what our audience or what uh, you are looking for, then I can speak in the context. We try not to speak out of context, right? <laughs> so in order to be able to speak well or to deliver what you have in mind, you must first listen. So yeah, thanks, John. Uh, I think uh, I've known John only for not very long, but I think we, we strike out very fast. Uh, and then uh, we had a couple of sessions. We went to Sing Wang Hong Kong Cafe, <laughs> have our first uh, dim sum. <laughs> <laughs> he recommended me a few nice food to eat. And then uh, after that, I went to uh, meet him and then uh, also drop him off at his, uh, uh, his uh, alumni, his NTU, where he met his wife <laughs> many years back. So I think, uh, yeah, we strike off. Uh, I think John is very passionate about what he does. Uh, so I think because like-minded, we both are. So when we start talking, we never end. So John always think that I'm, I'm always talking. So uh, I think I think uh, how how we started. Uh, I was working in uh, Singapore Press Holdings for for quite a while, for about five six years. Uh, I was uh, looking into the education exhibition in Singapore Press Holdings. I was the main uh, person in charge of all the education exhibitions and all the so all the educators they all know me lah. I'm like the liaison person for Singapore Press Holdings to all these uh, educators. So then, uh, along the way, uh, while talking to my clients at that time, all the educators, one of them proposed to me, said, hey, while well, he's teaching tuition, uh, suddenly a lot of parents asking him to, to hey, also teach public speaking. 
So he asked me, hey, Kelvin, you know, there's this business idea. Do you want to branch off with me to do uh, public speaking? I said, yeah, of course. Immediately when he asked, I said, why not? Because I think presentation helped us uh, or helped me along the way. That means it, it was uh, the skill that I feel is very important to uh, grow to where I was in my career at that time when I was working for people, as well as uh, now being a boss of my own center. I, I think communications is still the key or the most important life skill. Uh, there's one article I read. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but <laughs> there's one article I read about uh, the, the skills that your children are learning now might not even be applicable in future when they come out to work. So all the uh, whatever skills they are learning in school and all these sort of things. I mean, yes, we do have uh, 21st century uh, skill sets that John mentioned earlier. But uh, there's an article that state that the skills that the children are learning now will not apply when they come out to work because it will become obsolete. Because most of the things in future, you won't know what, what the future holds. Somehow is evolving so fast. But no doubt that skills keep changing. Communications is evergreen. And communications is going to make a difference in a child's success. And that's what I strongly believe in. So every time when John starts talking about his, uh, his business, about his uh, uh, math and everything, he's so enthusiastic and he's so persuasive. So this is me. Lah. I'm just the opposite. Of, I'm just exactly like John in the public speaking arena. So I can go on and on and on and on. I think one hour is, is, is too short. <laughs> but but okay, to, to spare all the parents' years, uh, this was my background. Uh, I started like that. And uh, the one reason why I did partner, my business partner who is Lucas uh, now, is also uh, Lucas, he is an introvert. So he was an engineer by training. He topped his PSLE. He got first for, for everything. He was on stage taking the award uh, for every single subject like English, math, science, except for Chinese. <laughs> so he's like the apple eye. He is the apple of the eye for all his teachers, for his family. It's like they can show him off all the time. He's like the role model Singaporean student. Then when he went to uh, he, he went to Victoria JC and JC and all this, uh, 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 and then he went to NTU studying engineering. Then the first time he had to speak to only about, I think he was telling me about 50, 50 plus students, three tutorial class combined for his presentation of his uh, triple E engineering. Uh. Wow, he said this is the first time where he met with a roadblock because he's an introvert. He studies smart, he's very good at his studies, but he just can't do presentation. So the moment he stand on stage presenting to this group of people, the girl who is sitting right in front that he likes, uh, after that, never talk to him ever again. <laughs> he lost his chance. So he then set himself to ensure that he does well for public speaking. So he whether he sets up a business with me or not, or whether he's teaching uh, something or not. But the miracle was he has managed to transform himself from an introvert to somebody who gives speeches and teach people how to teach children public speaking. So he's a miracle himself. Lah. So who's going to reject his offer? If somebody like that come to you and say, hey, you want to have a business with me or not? Of course, I say yes. Uh. Somehow, public speaking is very aligned to uh, what uh, I like and what I do on a daily basis and what helped me to, to where I am. So, yeah. yeah. This is really good. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I uh, thanks, thank you for, for sharing and the fact that you actually shared about your, your co-founder being very shy and, and uh, in fact, uh, found it as a challenge to speak on stage. Yeah, so let, let me just share with you um, a, a backstory of, of mine. Uh, and in fact, this is also one of the reasons why I think uh, I really want Kelvin to come on board his Facebook Live to share with the parents. Okay, so when I was in, in P5, uh, being the best class, so a lot of uh, expectations on us. And again, um, I'm, I'm also an extreme introvert, so you can let Lucas know. Uh, <laughs> um, when it's... My turn for the English oral, I think I remember it's a final year exam. Sorry, the SA2, yeah. So I got so nervous because 
in a sense, I can feel that my hands froze and like someone is choking my neck. And when I want to utter a word, I simply can't. Then when I just stood in front of the teacher and he is my form, he was my form T. Yeah, and I remember he told me after waiting for one one minute of silence, uh, he just said, why are you so hopeless? Oh, so this is something that I remember for life and it's something that I always told my kids that never ever look down on people who are introverts or are shy because look at us today, we are in fact speakers and, and, and trainers uh, in our own rights. Yeah, so it's very hard to, I mean, it's really up to a good teacher to, to discover the gem in the introvert child yeah, and bring out the best of him. Yeah, so um, Kelvin, would, would you be able to share with us, um, so when you train a child to speak, um, and I believe that uh, all our children cannot escape, yeah, your, and your kids and my kids, because every year they have to sit for oral, yeah. So what are some of the top tricks that you have, as, especially when it comes to getting a shy child or a child who has lost the confidence to open up? Hey, that's a great story. Uh, John, I didn't hear this story before. <laughs> uh, that's a great story. I think, I think yeah, I mean, uh, just, just to clarify a little bit, we are not changing a person's character. If you are an introvert, please, by all means, stay introverted. There's no, nothing wrong being an introvert. But what we are trying to do is, whenever there is a chance or an opportunity for you to speak up, whether it be on stage or whether you need to share something you believe strongly in or whether oral exams or even DSA, please be at your right position, be able to speak up and to present your thoughts. Or else, you know, people will either like, teacher will look down on you or you feel that hey, you're hopeless and, and such comments will really, no matter how, how confident you are in other things, but such comments will really pull all your self-esteem down. And this is the worst for any child to feel. Especially when a child has low self-esteem, he's not going to achieve anything, even though he has the knowledge or the skill set to do so. So I think just, just uh, John, while you're asking about the tip, I think just, uh, I mean, just, just simply state, because uh, yesterday I had a session with uh, uh, a kind of like a, a, a prominent uh, a businessman in Singapore, uh, a public listed uh, uh, owner, uh, a CEO, and uh, uh, his family member has got a bit of uh, uh, difficulties. Mm. So they engage us. Uh, I think just just from what I know, because there are so many things, I, I, I can't all squeeze to an, a one answer. There's no, there's no definite answer. I mean, if you really want, come to our trial class and then after you participate any then you ask your child uh, <laughs> if your child really like please sign up uh. <laughs> okay so uh, yesterday just only yesterday a, a session that we do um, for a, uh, a a family member of a, a listed uh, a, a company uh, CEO uh, in fact that he's not a young boy anymore he's uh, already in his 40s um he has this fear of public speaking or this fear of presenting himself. Uh, himself. Uh, a lot of times, uh, it could be his upbringing or it could be something in his mind. He has a lot of walls to tell him that, you know, uh, that uh, he shouldn't be speaking out what he has or he's not good enough to be confident to speak out. So what we uncovered was that there were a lot of walls because of his family, which is all very high level. Uh. Even, even after teaching him, uh, I mean, to sidetrack a little bit, uh, they say that, hey, Kelvin, your team should come up with a course uh, to teach all we all CEOs uh, how to teach our children uh, to, to, to be successors. Eh. That means how they can overtake us and still maintain the business or expand the business for us. That is a very, that is a brilliant course that you must do, Kelvin. Promise me you will think about it and you'll do because a lot of successful businessmen want to pass on to their children to take over. So he keep telling me this one, uh, Kelvin, must do, must do. <laughs> anyway, okay, okay, back to the topic, uh, back to the topic. So uh, what we had is, um, uh, we uncover a lot of wars he had in his mind. First of all, his family is so successful. 
his family members are doctors or you know they're all so high level so if you are not at that level there's a certain confidence that's lacking in you and if it grows and especially you know we all our traditional asian kind of parenting uh, is i mean the older generation they like to score right they say, i i don't know how to do this uh, huh? <laughs> let's call you score you score you then you bring down the confidence even more I'm not saying that if you keep praising your children, it's good. Huh? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there must be a balance. In a very, in his environment, uh, it was too successful. All his siblings, his family members are all top-notch people, you know. And when, when they sent when they sent him to me that time, I said, hey, but you cannot train him yourself, man. <laughs> You're even better than me. <laughs> so uh, again, uh, one tip was, uh, First of all, we told him, don't let the spotlight be on you. Means a lot of times people who go up stage, right? Whether you're an adult or a child, uh, you always think that everyone is looking at you. Everyone is going to be thinking what you're going to say next. Everyone is the eyes on you. The, then the face, uh, now wear masks even worse. You can't even tell their expression whether they are happy or not. Most of the time they are like, oh, or, or things like that. Then you fear because you thought, that the spotlight is on you. Okay, let me clarify a little bit. Let me go deeper. If you think that whatever you're going to present on stage is not you, it's what the audience want to hear. You know how humans are, right? We are, in a way, we are a bit selfish. So we only want to hear what we want to hear. While I pay for the talk or I pay for this uh, uh, speaking or, or whatever to listen to this conference. I only want to hear what I want to hear. I don't care what my neighbor who sit beside me want to hear. I don't care what the speaker want to say. A lot of speakers, sometimes they like to howl in uh, or they show off themselves. Uh. I don't want to hear all this. I just want to hear what applies to me. Because I am. I want to come to this course to learn what I want to know. Ma. Not what I want to see, how handsome the speaker is. How <laughs> It doesn't matter how wow, he can speak Queen's English. Wow, very good, very good. No, I want to hear what I want to hear. That's why I pay for the course. Or I come to see you present on stage. So if the audience just want to hear what they want to hear, and different audience have their own what's in it for me, why do you care whether when you're standing on stage it's yourself? All you need to do is do the homework of what your audience want to know. <laughs> you just say what they want to know. And the spotlight is not on yourself. But I'm not saying... Uh, you don't get, you don't comb your hair or you look very sloppy. You like, for example, for John's interview today, I go and wear my t-shirt or my singlet because I'm at home. No, still look presentable, still look uh, uh, clean, still, you know, do up your hair properly, still look present, uh, still have a presentable image. But remember, the spotlight is not on you. <laughs> the spotlight is themselves, what they want to hear. So if you are able to research and to find out uh, what your audience want to hear, and this might sound cliche, you know, when you Google how to improve in public speaking, you'll see, okay, audience participation and all this, yes, yes, yes. But a lot of times we think that it's us. So if we put the spotlight away, like now I have a light just for John, huh? but if I turn the spotlight away, it's no more on me. Mm -hmm. Now it's on the audience. So whatever I say, if the audience... Is a Singaporean crowd. They don't care whether you speak English with the Queen's English with the accent or not. To speak like a like like wow, very nice accent and all this doesn't matter. I have ever a student uh, who is in an international school speaks the best among all his classmates. Uh, in in my speech class, uh, 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 where we first started, right? He speaks very good uh, English. His accent was so beautiful. But every month end when we had the parents' presentation, that means parents can sit into the class and watch your own child present, he every single month end either will speak one sentence and get choked or he will stay outside of the class, hold on to the reception table and shout and say, no, I'm not going in. While every week when he is in class alone with his students and with uh, with the teacher, uh, he's able to stand up and present. It took him uh, about six months uh, 
before he finished one whole speech, which is only about two minutes long, after six months, he's, I think at that time he was, if I'm not wrong, he is about eight or nine years old. Lah. Yeah, so it took him six months to finish about a two-minute speech for the first time. You know, his mom cried in tears uh, and bought cakes for all the other students and the parents. So why a person with excellent English is so fearful? So when we unravel, there's a mystery behind it. Because the very first time he stood up to present to his mom, uh, his mom brought his younger sister along. And his younger sister was cheering and laughing at him when he spoke. So he had that war, as I mentioned. That Because of that, he has so much fear that every time when his month end presentation, he doesn't want to present on stage. Mm. He doesn't want to be jeered at or embarrassed. And because the other weeks, the, fun, the class is usually very fun. So the, the kids will always, all, all our students will always say, I want to come back, I want to come back, I want to come back. They love the class. So he felt that kind of love and that kind of like excitement every week only on the month end. So mm -hmm. it took a while. It took a very long time. And because of that, uh, I mean, there, there are so many cases. I, I, I can't name one, but I hope that kid helps. That means try not to put the spotlight on yourself. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I actually like the story about the kid who held on to the table and refused to go in. Um, because I think I can also share a bit about myself. Um, I think many many new friends like you uh, who just know me uh, uh, do not know my real background. <laughs> yeah, actually, ever since I lost my dad when I was very young, um, I think um, also because of the, the experience of the loss of someone who is very important, I started to lose confidence in myself and I started to stammer very badly um, ever since I was 18 years old. Yeah, and it took about, I think, over 15 years for me to, to really get over it in the sense of to accept it as who I, I am and then to move on to speaking, even though I know that sometimes when I get too anxious, I started. Yeah, yeah. So, to help the parents to um, conceptualize it into um, bite-sized steps, uh, because we do maths now, so I must help the parents to break it down, down all those steps. Yeah. So um, I think what I got off from what Cal Calvin was sharing was that um, you need to help to empower your child to be who he is or who she is, um, in a sense of to speak out from the hearts, in a sense. Yeah. And this journey is going to be filled with ups and downs. Uh, but nonetheless, you need to always cheer your child on and to really understand your child and to really be aware of what are some of the mental roadblocks um, in, in your child and we'll work together with your child to, to, uh, to, to move on to a higher, higher level. Am, am I right to say that? Yeah, yeah. Actually, to interject you uh, from, from, your, from where you left off, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we will, uh, there's a story that I, I used to share uh, that is with regards to, uh, 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 sorry, are we, are we on time? Am I? Uh, no, is this, not. is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, 8.30 a.m. Okay. Cut, cut me uh, if I'm talking too much again. Uh. Please, John, please. Yeah, I really need that. Yeah. And I think what, what the parents will really like is to really hear uh, about actionable tips for yeah. English oral as well as BSA interviews. I think yeah. sharing two or three essential tips will be good for them. So okay. Programming for, for, for them. So, yeah. so just to share on the story uh, that, that you mentioned earlier where you started and all this, yeah. uh, I have read uh, from a research before that... Uh, Okay, usually there, there are cases where some patients, they, uh, they got into an accident, uh, they got a stroke, they must go for uh, like a, probably a hemispherectomy uh, operation where it might uh, consist of cutting uh, half of the brain just for them to survive. So I research a little bit because while we are doing this, we need to also understand neuroscience and, and things like that, how people uh, think and why people still fear standing up to present. So while researching this, uh, the hemispherectomy uh, operation, 
where they cut a patient, a single patient, one of the patients, they had that uh, part of the brain that was removed that was the key to speech development. And of course, after it's removed, that uh, his speech was impaired. Lah. That means, he, like yourself, you still stutter. Eh? He totally cannot, eh? because the part of his brain eh, is removed for speech development. And to cut the story short, it took weeks and weeks and months eh, till he finally able to speak and speak a sentence with that part of the brain eh, removed for him to survive. You know, So without that part that gives you the speech, and he's still able to miraculously speak because of uh, therapy and because of practice and, and his long stay and, and all this. Uh, it really means we can actually practice to speak and to communicate if we want to. If somebody with half of the brain gone that, that, that focus on speech development can speak, why with our whole brain, we cannot. So this 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 is something we researched in the past. Okay, so back to the tips uh, for oral and uh, uh, DSA. A lot of times, I realize a lot of children, even extroverts, they can speak very well. That means they they speak and all this. But one thing they always do when they are put on the spot, they probably don't mind. I stand up. Uh, they they will probably don't move their hands. They will keep holding on. They say, "Hi, my my, my name is John." Mm. I, I, I am eight years old. So, so a lot of times they, 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 they can speak, but hi, my name is John. I am eight years old. Uh, I, 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 I like to... Uh, so even extroverts are faced with this problem. So uh, in our classes, a lot of times we emphasize is non-verbal communication. Mm. Okay, so actionable steps are non-verbal communications. Uh, when we do non-verbal communications, uh, there are some things to look out for. Not, not too uh, aggressive. Uh, you, don't, you don't talk like that. But in our classes, we give a, a certain, how should I put it? A certain, uh, a, a certain name to each action. So for example, if you are, I'm John, I, I'm eight years old. So instead of that, we say, let's do the fan. Hi, my, my name is John. Oh, wow. wow. So I do the fan. So now next, my chest touch. Hi, my name is John. Uh, I am eight years old this year. So do you, do you see the difference? Yeah. I am doing this as compared to doing the hands. Yeah. So nonverbal communication. Can I go deeper a bit, John? Yeah, Allow yeah. me to go yeah. deeper. Okay. Nonverbal communication. Let me share something more. Yeah, please go okay. Ahead. As a leader, as a leader, mm -hmm. can you say, come, follow me. Come, yeah. follow me. Do anything can. you want. <laughs> no, cannot. Yeah. 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 Come, come, follow me. Ah, then people don't, don't respect you, right? Or people don't follow yeah. you, right? So what do we do? We teach a child without changing anything, just change two things. One, the hand gesture, which is a non-verbal communication. Mm -hmm. We call it the lift. So, we do this and we say, come, follow me. Mm. Come, follow me. So, which are the two things that we change? One is the hand gesture instead of, come, follow me. Come, follow me. Or, come, follow me. So, the lift and the tonality of the voice. So, with hand gestures, with non-verbal communication and tonality, I deplete a certain character. You see, I deplete a leadership character. Okay, look, uh, you see, uh, with non-verbal, uh, come, follow me. I suddenly become a leader. Mm -hmm. Even though I may be a four-year-old or five-year-old child, we, we start with three years old, uh, our classes. So even if you're four-year-old, you don't know what a leader is, right? But because you've got a leader topic to, <laughs> to present to your parents, right? So you say, come, follow me, daddy, mommy, or something like that. But you don't know what is a leader. Okay, let's put it on another example. If I want to do a topic on caring, mm. on caregiving, that means I, I care for you. Can I do it this way? I care for you. Mm. No, is right? It, I mean, okay. I, and I think what I'm getting out from here is uh, the action must be congruent to the feeling that you want to portray. Yeah. So instead of I care for you, what do we tell the kids? 
to do, the four-year-old kids onwards. We tell them, chest touch and lower your tonality. Two things only. So, I care for you. See? From, come, follow me, a leader. You can't say, I care for you as a caregiver, right? I care for you. The tonality drops and the hand gesture of the chest touch. Imagine this, uh, when we are known as a meritocracy society, right? And it's very hard to put empathy into such a society. Uh. Imagine your kids at a young age uh, can learn empathy or caring by doing simple non-verbal communications. They probably don't even know what caregiving is at that age or they don't even know what empathy is. Just like when we tell them, you go to a coffee shop, right? To eat uh, dinner, right? Sometimes there's an uncle or auntie want to sell you tissue paper, right? Like go to the uh, sell you tissue paper. So what daddy, mommy does? We eat, 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 then uncle, auntie, sell us tissue paper. No, 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 no. No need, no need, no need like that. No, 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 no. Don't waste my time. <laughs> then continue eating. What if we tell the kids to just eye contact, which is a non-verbal communication, mm -hmm. look at the uncle, mm -hmm. look at the uncle and just say, uh, uncle, xie, xie, wo bu yong na ge tissue. Mm -hmm. All it takes is not taking out the money to pay for the tissue. All it takes is eye contact, which is non-verbal communication, and xie, xie, wo bu yong tissue, and go back to eating. Less than, less than five words. That, it depletes empathy and a caring society by using non-verbal communications, which is the fundamental of evoking characters. I don't know if I if it's a bit a bit team or not. I, I can simplify further, but it's just by doing non-verbal cues, you are able to depict certain character traits. And all these character traits are what make you to be successful in life. And this is, I feel, okay, so going back to what are the steps, uh, what are some of the things parents can do for their kids? Learn to tell them about hand gestures. Mm. Learn to tell them about tonality, eye contact, facial expression. Learn uh, to share. To, to help the parents to, to, to summarize, Ken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, our parents, uh, okay, I think what Calvin uh, is sharing right now is something that is very different from what I normally hear. and something that I think can benefit many of my children. Uh, a lot of times when I talk to trainers or, or, or speakers uh, who do train kids in public, in public speaking, I think their focus is very much on, okay, you got to speak like that, you got to uh, portray a certain kind of tone. Um, yeah, but I think uh, if you listen carefully to the intent of Kelvin, he's bringing you to the fact that 70% of the communication is, fun, is, is, is exhibited by the body language. Yeah, and it can be shown a lot by how we gesture, how we stand, how we breathe. Even sitting upright versus slouching during the oral times tells um, different things about your kid. Yeah. So if you think that this is something that will interest you and you like what he's sharing, uh, please, show, please tell us that this show uh, that you're here by liking the post and also share this post because this Facebook post is a gift free. Um, and we really want to help more parents to, to learn about all the tips, the easy tips that can help our child to do well in oral. And in fact, as long as your child is in primary school, your child will sit for oral at least two to four times a year. And it's like, wow, it's quite a lot there. Eh? Wow, for, for a small child. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you will be able to tell us a bit more about the oral and also spend a bit more time on the DSA also, which is something very interesting, interesting for the parents. I think, I think, uh, um... As I was uh, mentioning about the uh, the hand gestures, uh, the body language, uh, it's, it's it's very important that we apply that in our communications, like uh, what John mentioned. So uh, I think I think sharing on to 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 oral tests. If you come in, uh, some teachers in uh, MOE schools uh, they feel that too much hand gesture is also uh, is too much. That means don't do excessive hand gesture. It's going to be distracting. Yes, I agree with that. So when you are on stage, it's different. Stage public speaking, you need wide and big hand gestures because you're very far from the audience. But for uh, oral one-to-one, -one, you're just right beside the person. So you don't have to say, wow, uh, because <laughs> yeah, no need, no need. 
Yeah, no need. So all you need to do is talk with hand gestures, but not excessive. Not too big. Big ones only use on stage. Smaller mm -hmm. ones to use. What one one tip for parents? Why not? Why not? Uh, after what you heard on John's uh, uh, podcast, I mean, on John's uh, uh, Facebook today, why not tomorrow when you go to work or if you work from home or if you do conference call, why not try this little thing? Be aware of the top of your head to the bottom of your toes. Every single thing you're doing while, pre while talking. That means start to be aware where your eyes are. Are your eyes fixated on the person you're talking to? Is your hand, is your facial expression, some people I see, you know, we interview a lot of people. Uh, do, you, do you look like you, you're answering very knowledgeable, but you're always frowning? Does it look good on you? It's like you're always frowning, even though you are talking a lot of sense, you're making a lot of sense, but you're always frowning and you always look sad. This, face, this facial expression actually turns people off, you know. So if tomorrow when you go to work or anytime you talk to somebody, just be aware of your top of your head to the bottom of your toes, what your hand gestures is, how you move it, uh, but not until forever, you know, because this will become a habit and you will know exactly what are your hand gestures, then you don't need to think about it. Really. It's just to start to know that, hey, I am actually always frowning when I talk to people or I'm actually looking away from the people while talking to people. Mm. It's like, yeah, yeah, John, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, or looking at your phone or, or whatever. Just be aware from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes and just try to see, hey, oh yeah, this I may have to change. Or oh, this part I'm really good. Ah, so I can keep to that. A lot of people, they get more attentive or they want to hear me talk because I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, this is just one tip for, for you tomorrow, lah, straight away. Okay, for oral and DSA, it's very straightforward. A lot of times, oral is very scary for children. So when they go in, they will, all, of course, be, be, be questioning, uh, 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 be very fearful, and no more hand gesture. They will stuck the hand. Remember, just now I show they will stuck the hand on their on their on their on their on their uh, shorts or whatever, and, and then they 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 won't know how to do all this. Uh, it's not wrong. So if they are able to just open up, just be more uh, fluent with their hand gestures because they are always practicing it. Not too wide, but just proper. Uh, it will show the interviewer or the DSA interviewer or the oral examiner that he's a bit more confident. Mm. And we actually, Speech Academy Asia, we have come up with uh, 82 questions, specific 82 questions for exactly what most of the interviewers were asked. So yeah, we do have an oral DSA course uh, where, where people sign up for. So, But as a tip, just for a starter, just remember that your child can learn hand gestures by telling him things like chest touch, the rise, ball holding. Sometimes when you, when you stand here, you, you stand like that. This is called the ball holding. So the fan, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a lot of uh, names that you can come up with each hand gesture. So once they remember the fan, so they will know, hello teacher, you know, uh, that itself, suddenly like, hello teacher, or hello teacher, that itself portrays confidence. And that will score you marks. Okay, tonality is one way. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, non-verbal communication. Do you need to speak Queen's English? No, but don't speak with the la. I mean, even as us Singaporeans, we try not to speak with the la. la. I mean, in a, in a formal uh, oral exam and all this. We can speak to our friends, all this English is fine. But when you need to do a, a presentation, you need to stand up on stage or you need to do your oral exam, don't, don't end off with a la. Just, just keep it. Okay? Um, uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, like, like what John mentioned earlier, is a lot of times we need to uh, really focus on uh, simple steps, uh, process it out. He will process it out and then we can do this for our kids, simple uh, learnable steps. Yeah, and then from there, uh, if we really want to further their... Uh, some, some parents even bring their kids who are extroverted or who, who won Toastmasters and who are in the debate team to improve further in a systematic way. Why? Because to them, they feel that, hey, that's my kid's strength. Why not I, I, I focus on his strength and get better for it? Uh, so, so there are two types. Lah. The introverts that really come and really need to learn to speak up as well as those very good ones like debate team uh, and then they, they, they just want to learn some more tips to improve on them. 
yeah, so yeah, hope this helps, John. Great. Yeah, so it sounds like to me, uh, I mean, I'm also learning from Kelvin right now because uh, I'm also taking down notes. Yeah, so I think um, back to your child, I see any child who goes for a public speaking course, I think it's very much on helping the child to gain confidence uh, one step at a time. And parents, I think a lot of times when we like give our own advice to our own kids about how to do well in aura, the common um, word or words that, that I hear is just talk. Lah. So you just talk, 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 talk. Yeah, but what I'm hearing from Kelvin uh, is that you also, look, you also need to be very self-aware in the sense of how do you even portray your confidence without opening up your mouth. And I think that is very powerful. Yeah, yeah. So um, right now, I think you have shared with me um, some videos, right? Yeah, so I want to really um, share with the parents and I will play first and then, then I will turn the volume down. Then you can share a bit with us like what is going on, what is going on, going on here. And if you have some backstory of the child, um, do share a bit more so, so that we get to learn from you as well, okay? Ken? All right, so uh, parents, let me just do a share screen and share computer sound. Okay, parents, uh, if you're still around, do like the post to show that uh, we are here. And if you do want to keep a copy of this Facebook Live video uh, in your Facebook wall, what you can do is just um, click on share and then it will be on your wall for you to view it anytime you want. Yeah. Okay, so okay, I can find the thing over here. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. This is boy who I want to share. Okay, hang on. Uh, let me just play first, then I will switch down the volume and then you can share with us what's happening here, okay? My name is Lohit. After I came here, I was very confident to go up on stage and tell my speech. And after I came to Speech Academy, I also improved my writing skills and scored full marks for my exam. Thank you, Speech Academy. Okay, I will just uh, mute because I think I can see that all these kids are speaking very confidently and they are also loud. <laughs> yeah, which also speaks volume about your, your, your program. Yeah. So could you share with us, um, I think what really interest me is uh, because that boy is not a Chinese and his Chinese is way better than mine. Yeah, so could you <laughs> say about a bit more on that? Uh, Om, uh, I think student Om joined us uh, in our Tampanese branch. Uh, I think um, uh, he has, his parents want him to learn Chinese because I think we all know how Chinese is very important. Uh, whether now or in future, you know, China being a, a very major force also. So uh, learning Chinese, we have seen, uh, in fact, more and more um, uh, non-Chinese uh, parents sending their kids to our Chinese class. Uh, what, what sets us, I think, very importantly, Om, first he's hardworking also. Lah. Then the teacher that is uh, teaching him is very dedicated spend a lot of time uh, dedicating in really making sure he can finish his or be able to do his speeches. Uh, one other fact is uh, we need to make the class really fun because when the class is really fun, that's where even though you totally don't understand the language, uh, you will want to participate because you see other students being able to speak that and then you, you just want to play along or you just want to be part of the of the team. So uh, we are very, very uh, happy to see uh, Om being able to finish his presentation, his speeches uh, in a foreign language. The one also is, that's why it's in our, it's our, in our, one of our videos. Uh, because he's also a very special, special boy. And uh, we have more and more of uh, non-Chinese families sending their kids to our... Oh, can, can, can I play this Hong Rei one? 
Yes. Hungry yes. one is. Okay, hold on. Uh. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay, hold on. Uh. I think this is a very good example. Um, in the sense, also, you can see a transformation, right? I think it's also very hard, heartbreaking to, to, to really let the child struggle through the process. And Morning, everybody. The... My name is Zara, and I'm learning public speaking and speaking academy AU. I'm sure more of you all know the friends, and you're probably sure why you're doing that now. But what I have here is a pen, so I designed that it will take it away, away the stress of writing. Okay, so this is what happens when we try to write a book. Okay, so that's the same point. Hello, everyone. My name is Homri. I am seven years old. Today, I want to tell you why I love Singapore. At first, I love Singapore because I am a Singaporean. This is my home. This is where I belong to. Secondly, what I like the most about Singapore is clean and green. Okay, yeah. Would you share with us? Hello, Jaya's parents and friends. I am Dara, and today I am going to share with you what I love about Singapore. Singapore is a very small country. Amazingly, there are many different types of playgrounds in every estate. Most importantly, these playgrounds are free for all to play. My favorite playground is at West Coast Park. I love it when the wind breaks against my face as I swing from one end to another. Okay, I think that's new here. Yeah. So would you share with us actually what have what 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 happened with the boy and so what actually created the transformation? Yeah. So so uh, Hongwei's parents uh as similar to 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 the to the uh, the the student that has brilliant accent but was crying all the while after he saw Hongwei being able to do the entire speech. Uh, he's also really thankful because uh, we usually capture all the month end presentation where they have to present to the parents uh, every month end for, for the students. So when we capture him on the first month, that, that's what he was doing. He was crying. So mm -hmm. again, uh, uh, it's, it's, how should I put it? It's, it must be something that they must feel a lot of fun in. If the kids are every week resisting to go to our classes or or just don't feel like going uh, i tell you there's no way no matter how good your teachers are can transform the child the only reason is because hongri cried on his first presentation but when he comes to class every week on week on week there is a lot of fun and a lot of magic for them to to really feel like coming back next week mm -hmm. and because of that hongri slowly improves 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 i think i think hong Rei one the case was about about one year he's able to join uh, our year and because we, we have uh, in, an interbranch competition we have multiple branches so so they usually we hold one large one at the end of the year but but what happened this year is covid la. we can't we can't actually uh, hold a hold a competition yeah we we can't actually uh uh uh, hold a, a, a competition. So, so uh, Hong Rei and Devil, they are, they are both students who have overcome their difficulties and be able to present. And uh, through really fun and welcoming, warm and welcoming environment. So it's not something where they were hate it or they have to practice and memorize their speech. You know, last time when I'm younger, I, I, my mom also sent me to those uh, public speaking English school la. so when I was there really to be honest if I forget to to say the speech or I couldn't complete the sentence my teacher will just tell me one thing you better go back memorize and if you're going to next week forget again ah. <laughs> so it's like wow Jialat, scared man <laughs> I don't want to come already <laughs> even though how important or how much my mom paid last time uh, I would say please uh, mommy don't send me to the school very scary so that is the thing that I don't want our students to encounter, to have fear for. So in a fun environment, that's where they can slowly, slowly, step by step, if the teachers are dedicated to teach and to really make sure that they overcome their fear. Hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, I think uh, we are coming to almost the end. Yeah, and hmm. probably one of your family members. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> Oh, I can speak body language very well. <laughs> 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 um, 
Yeah, I think this is uh, my, I think it's a uh, strength that I pick up um, also in my years of stuttering um, because I'm so sensitive to the surrounding and I do uh, observe very sharply like the non-verbal. Yeah. But sometimes I can take it the wrong side, like is he criticizing me or is he unhappy with me? So there's always both sides to the coin. Yeah. But anyway, I think uh, this is also very relevant to um, helping kids to speak confidently as well. And sometimes we we parents uh, may tend to overreact. Like our children uh, may see us frown or see us like like um, our eyebrow like goes up uh, or something like that. They may take the wrong the wrong way as well. So parents, you need to be very sensitive to your own own expression. If you are, if you want to help your child to thrive in this kind of space when it can be very scary for a young child. Yeah. So let me also uh, quickly share with the parents um, another video clip, yeah? Yeah, and I think well, this one is, it really inspired me in the sense of, it, take, it takes a lot of gut for a young child to be on stage. <coughs> okay. Some of the children even better than us, uh, John. <laughs> Okay, just quickly, yeah. Two years ago, I was in a similar event like this. I was speaking very enthusiastically in front of a huge crowd. Amazing, huh? And I'm gonna watch it. I think uh, for myself, I think two years or three years to prepare myself for this kind of yeah, just now, John, while you're speaking, right, the, because the music at the background, uh, you're asking me to give one, one uh, uh, takeaway, right? One no. last takeaway. Uh, so, so I think... Uh, uh, I, I think what's, what's very important is, thank you, John, uh, this, this platform of yours uh, is excellent because uh, it's telling parents that they should be involved in their own kids' uh, upbringing and their own kids' uh, future. Uh, a lot of times, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say this on live, uh, but uh, my mom, my mom, my own very mom, I have about 12 centers uh, and I have three, uh, and I'm in three countries. I'm in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei, four, four countries. So my mom also will come and tell me, say, hey, Kelvin, you teach so many kids, right? By your own son, how? <laughs> you got put a lot of effort a lot. So, I, 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 so a lot of times, I, I really appreciate like John uh, for this sort of platform to say that, hey, teaching your own kids, please also prioritize. Uh, no matter what you're doing, uh, uh, like for example, for even my my, uh, my 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 business is to help a lot of kids. I also have to spend time taking care of my kids. Uh, one article that I read about uh, Bill Gates. I mean, you all know Bill Gates, right? Uh, he's got he's got plenty of businesses. He's, he's got plenty of money also, lah. <laughs> he's got plenty of whatever, everything, lah. Oh. So he's like the man, uh. But he promises, I think at one stage, I, I don't know where, uh, I, I may be wrong, but he said that he was, uh, he promised his wife that he's going to fetch his uh, kids every day from school. And he made that promise, he never looked back. Mm. He really just every day prioritized fetching his kids. So 
even Bill Gates, one of the yeah, richest men, but also one of the most busiest men on earth, can do that. Oh, what's stopping us? So such a platform is wonderful, John. Thanks for letting me on this. Uh, it's a pleasure for us. And also, I think uh, this is also a reminder for myself to put more time on my own son and my own family. So whatever it is, we must really know that uh, our children need our time. And yeah, and this is a great opportunity. This is a one good takeaway. It's more of reminding myself uh, than, than, than telling the audience. It's more of telling myself, say, my mom also keeps saying, wow, you train so many kids uh, by your own son now. So it's again, I think, a, a good reminder. You know, I'm, I'm also listening to my own preaching. So, so I think uh, it's, it's, it's one takeaway that I, I, I can give. Uh, even though it's not related to public speaking, you hope that I can give one public speaking tip. But uh, I would like to end off saying that as parents, we should be uh, uh, involved and prioritize. Also. It, it could be a, just a, a promise that we make for our parents or to our wife or to our family. It's a promise. But we just make sure we go through that promise. Means if you promise, for example, uh, you promise to definitely have one uh, uh, one lunch with your son alone, alone time without phone, without anything, and really just once a week or, or, or one hour or two hours, make sure you do it and just deal with the deck of cards you are given. So if you promise that, just deal with it as a man and then just go through it and make sure we can uh, adhere to our words and this will be the best kind of last last takeaway. I hope I didn't disappoint you because you wanted a public speaking tip, but I would rather say this should be the last tip takeaway. Sure. Allow me to just add in my two cents and uh, before I share what I can give to the parents, I also want to take this opportunity to thank uh, parents Zai, Eric and uh, Anjali who are watching this right now. So if you like this sharing, uh, if you learn something from it, uh, please go ahead and like the post and drop a comment or any question that you have. Okay, my takeaway will be um, in regards to being able to speak confidently yeah, and also in relation to um, spending time with your kids. Uh, yeah. um, I think, okay, I believe that all of us have meal times, right? We still have to eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And um, when it comes to speaking, um, I always spend my time uh, with my kid uh, during new time and get them to share with them. So I share with me their day and I also share with them my day. Yeah. So I think it really build the habit of getting children to speak up. Yeah, so so that's my two cents. Yeah. Okay, um, 832 already and Kelvin is a very busy man running child centers. Uh, so for one, uh, I got one last question. Uh. Okay. Um, as you know, we support parents who teach maths uh, in our uh, Facebook group. Yeah, and PSLE was just over. Yeah, so uh, if I can invite you to go down your memory lane. Yeah, the older self, uh, older Kelvin going down to the younger self, Kelvin, and you bump into the 12-year-old Kelvin. What will you say to him? Can be anything, no wrong or right, can be anything. What will you, the older self tell the younger self? Wow. wow. I know, I know when I'm a, you got me speechless, man. <laughs> For once, you ask a question that I don't know how to answer. <laughs> you put, this is a interview. <laughs> you put me on the spot, John. Very few people can put me on the spot, but anything you did la. it. Anything, la. anything, la. anything. La. Yeah. Okay, la, yeah, la, yeah, la. Anything. No, that's wrong, right? Well, as a child, uh, I am very, uh, uh, very. I my brain is kind of like empty. Uh. I just study hard to appease my parents, to get good grades, to make sure my parents I, I never disappoint them, and that's it. I don't care about anything. So maybe my older self, but actually because probably many, many years I didn't care about anything. Uh. When I stay, start to care about things, uh, well, it makes a lot of sense. Like I care too much now. So, so if, if you want me to go back to my younger self to tell him what uh, my 12-year-old self, uh, actually, uh, I, I would have just tell him that uh, 
just just take it easy mm. uh, don't don't need to pressure yourself on on always trying to fulfill uh, people's expectations uh, uh, or, or to do anything even even though my I, I go back to my younger self I'll tell that but even now and my older self I also will tell that myself you know people's expectations are, are, are limitless so just be just take it easy. Uh, be yourself and uh, I think just be happy. Hey, you, you you got me on this one, man, John. I really, I really lost my words. You got me speechless. You are the first, you are the first interviewer uh, that I speak to for so, uh, because of the lockdown, uh, I got a lot of all these Zoom, Zoom uh, uh, interviews and, 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 and Zoom things. But you are the first one that got me, I cannot answer. Eh. <laughs> so you did it, you did it. You are the man, you are the man. Sweet <laughs> uh, on you, uh, lunch, lunch on you. Yeah, yeah, lunch on me. No, that's simple. Uh, okay. <laughs> question, uh, yeah. So what will you uh, tell your 12 year old about PSLE? Yeah, I mean, so what will you tell yourself about? What will you tell the 12 year old you about PSLE? What well, my study your okay. <laughs> because PSLE, eh? <laughs> you think what? <laughs> Not normal primary five, primary four, primary three, eh? PSLE. Eh? Anyway, my son is primary three, uh. He just finished. Today is his last paper. While you're talking about PSLE, uh, today uh, is his final paper, his maths paper. Then I told him, hey, you should enjoy. Well, last night, I was before we sleep, I tell him, wow, today last paper, finish, finish already. You enjoy. He said, no, le. uh, later after that, still got tuition. Thursday, still got things here. <laughs> he like, still got a lot of work. <laughs> so he said, cannot enjoy. But I, I tell him, say, uh, um, if I were to tell my son about PSLE, uh, I would tell him, say, I must study here. Uh. <laughs> Let's go for John PSLE Maths class. Ah, sure, sure. Can bring him for center. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got discount, uh, bro. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, sure. Uh. Don't forget me. Uh. My son going for PSLE soon. Uh. Three more years to his PSLE, but start young. Hey, you are young. Sure, sure. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, Kelvin. Yeah, so his words is study hard. I mean, of course, there are many schools that you need to learn. Uh, as a student, we need to do our role well, la. study hard because also uh, our parents um, spend so much money on 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 us. Uh, yeah, so just do just do your best, okay? Yeah, and thanks, uh, Rata and Anandan who have just come on board. And if you want to watch it again, just come back to this same Facebook Live and click on the replay. This video will be in Facebook page for a long time, okay? Okay, hey, Kelvin, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, eight to seven now, and thanks so much for being here. So um, don't go out first. We'll do a quick catch up after this, and then um, I'll release you back to your wife. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Good night.